In this video, we're going to take a look at creating our first quote-unquote website on this server. The way we're going to do that is by creating a default uh, or a new virtual host that the server is listening for. So the easiest way to uh, get something working is to just add it at var www where we are. You can see I've added a index.html page and we're going to move that to the HTML directory. So now this is what var www looks like. I've got a CGI bin directory, an HTML directory that contains an index HTML file. That is just some really, really simple markup, which we'll see uh, hopefully displayed in just a moment. And when we reload the page here, you can see this is our markup. So this default welcome page has been replaced with the markup that we have in our index.html file. So Apache is looking for an index.html file. We've given it that in var www.html. And here's the text we've got. So that's working, and that's definitely the easiest way to approach this. So now we want to do something a little bit more complex, and I would say a little bit more realistic for running a real web server with more than one website on it. Um, so any kind of like multi-tenancy where you're doing some web hosting. So let's set up our first website as a virtual host. First, for convenience, you might just want to comment out the stuff in the welcome conf file. So you can go ahead and just comment all of this out so that the, you don't have this popping up uh, when you get pages not found or whatever. Here's basically what it's going to look like. Right now, when we retrieve our www, we have a CGI bin directory and an HTML directory. What we're actually going to do is create this kind of layout. var www site name. In this case, it's our first site, so it's just tutorialinux.com. Um, we'll actually say test.tutorialinux.com slash public HTML. And that's going to be our doc root, our document root for the actual HTML files we've got in our site. So we'll make this. Uh, the p flag on make dear just creates multiple directories. So a normal make dear would fail here because this directory doesn't exist, and I'm asking it to make this one. This one will just create an arbitrary depth of directories. So now this is what it looks like. Uh, I'm going to say let's move our HTML file from here over to tutorial oops, test tutorial Linux public HTML. Now you can see this file has shifted here under the public HTML directory, just where we want it. Now we're going to edit our main httpd conf. So vim etsy httpd conf httpd conf. Wow, that sounds confusing when I say it. Anyway, read the text. So I'm just going to create this virtual host here all the way at the bottom. This is after the include optional statement, which basically doesn't fail if something isn't there, but it will include everything in the etsy httpd conf D directory, and that'll be things like the SSL configuration file. So like, for example, if this were virtualhost 443, because we want to use SSL, um, this needs to be after this optional includes so that Apache knows how to handle SSL. We've set a server admin. We don't really care about this. A document root, which is going to be the uh, directory we just created that has the uh, index.html file inside. The server name here, which is what we're listening for on port 80, is going to be test.tutorialinux.com. Our server alias is just going to be tutorialinux.com. And we've got, oh, I'm going to change this to test.tutorialinux.com. This will just be an error log outside of that public HTML directory. You'll see that in a minute. So once you have this virtual host container, you can go ahead and save this file. You can edit with whatever uh, text editor you like. If you're not familiar with Vim or VI, you could just use, uh, you could install and use something like Nano, uh, Ed, or anything else you're into. So let's go ahead and try a graceful restart of Apache by rereading these config files. And if there was an error, we would have seen it here. So we're okay. On your local machine, because there's no DNS pointing to this server, for the host name uh, test.tutorialinux.com. 
What I have to do is add it in my etc hosts file. Basically, this is a substitute or shadowing of the DNS system. So normally, if you make a website, you would need to create a, uh, a DNS A record that points to the IP address of your server, in our case, 162.243.199.43, and map that to the host name, tests, or the subdomain tests.tutoriallinux.com. We are not using DNS for this because this is just a quick test. So what I've gone ahead and done is just an ifconfig, grabbed my, um, oh, that's actually, <laughs> sorry. I should say IP show, IP adder show. So this is the new way of doing it. The net tool stuff still works, but this is the new syntax for checking your IP address, for example. So you can see this is our loopback interface. This is our eth0 interface, which we're interested in, ethernet. And here is our IP address. So you can grab it from here using the IP adder show command. Sorry, I, I always screw these new ones up still. Sorry, the, the old net tools commands are pr pretty deep in my fingers, so that's still my first reflex is doing it wrong. Um, it's always good when that's the case. So just copy this out, paste it into your etc hosts file, which just circumvents DNS essentially by shadowing whatever DNS says, because test.tutorialinux doesn't exist. I would just get an NX domain from the DNS system. And here I'm saying, yeah, yeah, don't worry about DNS. Just map this host to this IP address. It's essentially creating our own A record. And before DNS was a thing, this is how people contacted each other using names, host names, instead of IP addresses, because no one can remember an IP address. Okay, so you've put this into your etc hosts. We're gonna write and quit this. And now we can go back to the browser and reload our page. Now test.tutorialinux.com returns this. It's our slightly updated index.html file, which is now being served from that directory here, which is testtutorialinux.com. And you can see we've already written an error log, which should be empty. And we'll move on with our Apache uh, stuff. Uh, in the next section, we'll look at the Apache security configuration. So we'll talk a little bit about ports, firewalls, and uh, I think some SE Linux stuff in there too. I'll see you there.